All right. Uh, equipment you're going to need today is the usual uh, two pencils, something per, or pens, um, but something preferably again with letters on it, just something precise for your for your eyes to look at. Uh, and then your letter ball, you can do any ball shaped object of some sort that's exciting for your eyes to look at a dog toy, uh, a rolled up pair of socks, something like that. And then just remember with this class, because we work the visual and the vestibular system, that it's okay if your eyes start to feel um, tired, watery, itchy, or if you start to get a little nauseous, especially with the vestibular work. Um, but all those things means that you've met your edge. We don't want to go too far past your edge. So back off, take a break, close the eyes. Um, yeah, and listen to your body. Okay. We'll come back to a seated or standing grounded position here. And let's just stretch the arms out wide, up overhead. Twirl the wrists around a few times. And then we'll bring the arms down. Okay. We'll close the eyes and find a still point. Starting to come into your breath. Seeing if you can find that low belly breath. And then keep your eyes closed. We're just gonna do one of our box breathing exercises right here. If I'm counting too fast or too slow, then you can do this one at your own pace. But we're gonna do box breathing on a three count. So it's gonna be an inhale for three seconds, a hold for three seconds, an exhale for three, and then a hold for three. So feel free to put either both hands on the low belly, um, or if you'd like, you can do one hand on the chest, one hand on the low belly. Okay, and we're gonna start with an inhale, three, two, one. Hold your breath, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one, and hold, three, two, one. Inhale, two, one, hold, exhale, and hold. Inhale, hold, exhale, and hold. Inhale, hold, exhale, and hold. Last one, inhale, and hold, exhale, and hold. Good, and then come back to normal breathing. And then just coming more into your body, maybe sensing your hips or your sit bones on the chair, sensing your feet on the floor or the base of your wheelchair. Okay, we'll take one more inhale. One more exhale and we'll open the eyes. Okay, we'll take both arms up overhead, interlace the fingers if you can, take an inhale and then exhale to articulate down. Taking an inhale at the bottom and exhale to roll up. And then reaching up, shrugging the shoulders up. Let's come into a side bend to the left and to the right. 
and back to the center and one more roll down let everything shrug up hollowing out the back and then articulating down inhale at the bottom and exhale up Good, and then we'll take the arms reaching behind you, interlace the fingers if you're able to, or just reach behind you and opening up your chest. Hold that for a breath. Good, and then we'll shake that out. Okay, let's bring the hands together, finding a hand rub. building up a little bit of heat and friction, rubbing the back of your hands. And then let's go through the fingers today because we've skipped the fingers before. So grabbing your thumb, if you're able to grab your thumb, otherwise you can use your knuckles to rub it out, but grabbing your thumb and doing the same thing we do with the toes rolling and twisting the thumb as if you were twisting a bottle cap, maybe eight or so times back and forth, and then squeeze and pinch the top of the thumb, and then move on to the next finger. Roll, roll, roll the pointer finger back and forth. Pinch the tip of the finger, and then on to the next one. And noticing if you have some fingers that are maybe a little bit more sensitive than others. Pinching the tip of the finger and then moving on. Working your way all the way through the pinky. Shaking that hand out. And then we'll do the other side. Roll, 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 and squeeze. Roll, 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 and squeeze. And same thing here, working your way through the pinky, noticing if any fingers on this hand are more or less sensitive than the other fingers. Okay, and then we'll shake that out. Okay, we'll bring uh, fingertips to the area just under your collarbones, finding some gentle tapping there. All the way across the chest. giving a little bit of extra attention to your breastbone and just knowing, just noticing if there's any tenderness specifically around your breastbone. Or maybe it's right out to the sides of the breastbone. And then we'll shake that out. Okay, good. We'll bring both hands. So go ahead and stack both hands on top of each other. And we'll start with this. Finding a, a clockwise circular direction, rubbing your belly. And only putting as much pressure through your hands as it feels good for you. Sometimes we have some tender spots in the belly. But if your belly feels really supple, like you can sink your hands in a little bit more, then start to sink your hands in a little bit more. We don't want the belly or the body to respond. So stop right before it, it feels too pokey or like too much pressure. But if you can even scoop your hands or your kind of the palms uh, the palms of your hands, especially underneath your ribs, 
that can sometimes be a tender area, but just holding, taking a breath into it. Right under your ribs is where your whole diaphragm attaches to, which is that primary breathing muscle and is the main muscle that's working for you when you're doing a belly breath. Okay, and then we'll shake that up. Okay, good, let's come to some, some neck stuff here. So let's just start with some neck movements. I just want you to do a head tilt up and down to start. So tucking the chin all the way in and then lifting up. And when you lift that head up, thinking of elongating, stretching the front of the neck. And when you tuck the chin in, thinking of lengthening and stretching the back of the neck. Mm -hmm. And now when you lift the head, can you slide your lower jaw forward? And then slide it back in as the head tilts down. There we go. Do one more. And then back to the center. Okay. I'm going to zoom in for this one just so you can see. So then we're going to find some more of the, those really fine-tuning neck movements. So sometimes it helps to put a hand on the chest just to make sure that you're not doing anything funky with the shoulders or the chest. This movement's just staying in the head and the neck. And you're just going to find your pigeon. So sliding the head forward and then bringing it back in like you're trying to give yourself a bunch of double chins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the tendency for a lot of us, keep going with that movement, just forward, back, forward, back. And I want you to feel the deep neck flexors working for you. So kind of floor of the mouth coming down the front of the neck, especially as you pull the head back in. That's when those muscles are working for you. So a lot of us spend our day with our chin jutted out and up, which shortens the back of the neck and it makes that whole area really tight and restricted. So this is just a good way to mobilize the neck, to lengthen the back of the neck and to strengthen the front of the neck, which in a lot of people, if the, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but if this is your, sport, your seated posture with your chin jutted up and out, these muscles in the front of your neck get really long and sleepy, meaning they're not working very hard for you. So doing the pigeon can kind of help with those. Okay, so now we're gonna bring that into kind of a pigeon now, but going side to side, like that 80s dance move. The head is still staying parallel with the floor, but you're just gliding it forward and back. If you have hardware in your neck, this might be kind of challenging for you. So you can do the same movement from the ribs. Otherwise, trying to keep that movement in the neck. And again, this is a really small movement. You might only be sliding your head a centimeter or so in each direction. I'm just gonna watch people here. Yeah, and making sure when you're doing that, the chin is drawn in. Don't let the chin jut up and out. So chin jut, is, chin is pulled in. And then finding the glide of the head side to side. Yeah, there we go, nice everyone. Okay, good, and relax, awesome. Go ahead and just find a head tilt to the left. And then you're gonna roll that through the center coming over into a head tilt to the right, rolling through the center, and just coming into a head tilt on each side, roll through. And can we start to do that a little bit more with our shoulders? So coming more into a rag doll roll through. 
So not coming into a full roll down, but just letting the shoulders lean forward, hunch forward with you, and then sitting tall as the neck side bends. Yeah, rolling through the center and side bend. Roll through. Side bend, let's do one more. Roll through. And side bend and release and relax, good. Okay, we'll just do a couple of the head stuff today. I'm gonna scoot this up. So we'll grab the tops of the ears if you can. Find a pull of the ears up and back behind you. And you can pull them also slightly away from each other. And take a couple of belly breaths right there. and slowly release that. Grabbing the ear lobes or using your knuckles and tractioning or pulling your ears down and back behind you and also a little bit away from each other. Holding that, taking a belly breath or two into that hold. and then slowly release, shake the hands out. Ooh, that one always feels so good. Okay, we'll take knuckles to the bottom of the cheekbones, just finding a few drags going down from the cheekbones to the lower jaw. Trying to land your knuckles right in that soft tissue. There should, for a lot of us, there's some tender areas in here. So noticing a difference between the two sides, if that's true for you, letting your jaw go slack as you drag. And I'll just do one more. Good. And then shake that out. Okay, good. Let's do a quick tap. Pull my sleeves down here. Okay, quick tap of the upper body. So just working your way, we'll go uh, down the inside of the arm to give the hand a rub and then up the outside of the arm. Waking up that whole side, you can use an open hand, a soft fist, whatever feels good for your body today. Make sure you get the top of the shoulder. And then once you've done that side a few times, come into your gorilla beating on your chest. And we're gonna make some sounds here. So stay with that. You can go open hand or closed fist, play with what feels good for you. And we're gonna go. Finding your horse slips. Just do that a couple more times. One more time. Good. And there you go. Ah, open your mouth big. Ah, I get loud. Ah, and then e. Good and relax. Okay, go right into your other side. Oops. Coming down the inside of the arm and then up the outside. I'm going to do a few things with the joints today. But let's just finish our tapping. So we'll come to your low back using a soft open fist or the sides of your knuckles. Just give your low, your low back some gentle taps. If it's hard for you uh, to reach your low back, you could do the sides of your body also. And then I want you to work down the outsides of the legs and then up the insides. And 
just finding a tapping or rubbing that feels good for the lower body. Give the knees a little bit of love if you can reach them. Give the feet a little bit of love if you can reach them. Maybe even a scratch. Okay, and relax. Okay, so let's start with, um, we're gonna start with the shoulders and the hips. So I'm gonna give you a couple variations for seated and standing athletes. Okay, so uh, seated athletes, we're gonna come into a goal post arms. And then just start, and I want you to move really slow for these, turning the goal, goal post upside down and then right side up. And just really feeling your shoulders today, noticing the range of motion. So if you even want to look back and forth from left to right to see how each side is doing, you can. And then for standing athletes, let me back up. And this might be easier not on a yoga mat, but coming from kind of a ballerina position, heels together, toes apart, lifting the heels and then turning everything so they're facing in, toes together, feet apart. So external rotation, ballerina, and then internal rotation. And just going back and forth with either the legs or the shoulders there. Okay, good. So now you're going to hold that goal post position. You're going to bring the arms together. So the forearms, the elbows, and the hands are touching. And then you're going to open the arms and the elbows as far away from each other as you can. Close the elbows, like closing a door, and then open. That's it. Close and open. And when you close, I want you to give your arms a squeeze. So really push in like those two arms are fighting each other and then pulling away. Mm -hmm. For uh, standing athletes here, just finding a big side step and then coming back in. Big side step, you can even bring that into a lunge and then coming back in. There you go, yeah. And trying to keep um, your elbows at shoulder height if that's possible. It's okay if they go down a little bit. Just makes it a little bit harder. Let's do one more. Mm -hmm. Good, and then shake the arms out, shake the legs out. Okay. Arms are gonna come in front of you, give me the stop sign signal. And then just moving, give you my side pro profile, just moving from the shoulder blades. You're gonna pretend like you're pushing something really heavy. You can let the upper back round a little bit and then squeeze the shoulder blades together, sit tall. Round the spine, push that heavy object forward and then pull everything back, sit tall. Round and pull. Seeing if you can find an inhale to round and an exhale to pull. Keep going with that. And then standing athletes, you're gonna be finding a tuck of the tail under and a lift. Tuck and lift. Tuck and lift, just coming back and forth. Let's do a couple more wherever you're at. Okay, good. And then back to the center. Okay, so working from the elbows a little bit more now. So just starting to find some circles of the wrists around the elbows. And again, just moving really slow. So noticing Looking from side to side, is there a difference? Does this feel easier on one elbow or one shoulder? 
and then standing athletes finding knee circles around the ankles so you can bring both hands to the knees in a bent over position and then circling the knees around everyone switch directions okay and then back to the center Good, and then moving down to the wrists and the ankles. So give me that stop sign signal again in front of you. You're gonna make a fist if you're able to and point the fist or the wrist down. Ooh, <laughs> that is tender today. And then pull the hands up, give me that stop sign signal and really spreading the fingers. How far back can you bring your, can you pull your fingers towards you? Make a fist point down and then pull the fingers wide, pull them back. Yep, and then likewise, same thing for standing athletes, pointing the foot, flexing and spreading the toes. So just balancing on one leg, maybe doing six on one leg and six on the other. Lift and point, lift and point good and then you're gonna bring your hands out in front of you we can let's bend the elbows in for this one we'll give the shoulders a break and i want you to channel your inner dj like you're spinning a track so just sliding your wrist side to side towards the pinky towards the thumb towards the pinky towards the thumb and then likewise for standing athletes doing the same kind of movement with your ankle, turning the ankle, so can you see my feet on here? Turning the ankle out and then in, out and then in. Mm -hmm. Switch feet if you haven't already. And then same thing, just noticing like does one wrist or one ankle have a lot more range of motion than the other or is one of them more tender so just noticing that all right good go ahead and shake all of that out upper body lower body okay let's grab the letter ball i'll have you come right into playing and then i'm going to layer on so if you've been playing with me for a while, go ahead and, and go right into that. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna talk you through. So holding that ball into the chest, you're gonna pull it away at whatever angle around your body that you like. Look at the ball, say the first letter number you see, and then pull it back into the chest. Pull it away at a different angle, say the first letter number you see, pull it back in. And you're just going to continue to do that, moving the ball around your body. Quickly saying the first letter number you see. And then pulling it back in. If you're able to play catch with yourself, then, I, then you can do that. Remember, you're trying to make this game unpredictable for yourself. It's okay if you drop it. In fact, it's good if you drop it, except for the fact that it might be annoying to, to chase after it. Remembering to move or throw that ball all the, oops, all the way around the body. You could bounce it off of the floor. You could bounce it off of a wall. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to layer on one type with this. On every fifth row, whatever side of your body that you catch it on, so let's say I catch it on the right side of my body. 
I'm going to move at the pace of my breath. I'm going to take an inhale and I'm going to rotate. I'm going to keep my eyes locked on that letter number. I'm inhale. I'm going to rotate to the right. I'm going to exhale to come back to the position where I caught it. And then I'm going to do five more throws. Five, four, three, two, one. You catch the fifth one. Inhale, and you're trying to keep that ball kind of at the angle you catch it. So if I catch it above my head, I'm going to keep it up there. I'm going to inhale as I rotate to the left. Exhale as I rotate back to the position I caught it. And then I'm going to do five more throws. Okay, so just bringing your attention to that fifth throw and then into your breath again. Inhale to rotate, keep your eyes locked on that letter number. Exhale back to the position that you caught it in, and then five more throws. There we go. Nice, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of nice because sometimes the letter ball can get hectic <laughs> and it can get fast. But then it's a reminder to slow down, find your breath again, reset, and then keep playing. Oops. Oh, goodness. I really lost the ball this time. Maybe just do a couple more rounds of that. Inhale as you rotate, rotating as, far, <laughs> rotating as far as you can, keeping your eyes on the ball. Exhale to come back to the center and then keep playing. Yeah, when you've done about two more rounds of that, just so I know that you're done, go ahead and set the letter ball down. Yeah, nice, everyone. That's great. Yeah, go ahead and set the letter ball down and then just find a roll forward just so I know. And then finding a breath at the bottom. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, and then slowly roll yourself back up. All right, I'm going to have you grab both of your pencils. We'll all do this one together, bringing a little bit of visual work into this and then a little bit of tongue work also. Okay, so pick a letter on each pencil and holding, let's see, uh, actually just, just hold one of them out for now, but we'll alternate back and forth. Okay, so one of them can kind of be out in front of you. So maybe pencil starting in your left hand. You're gonna look at a specific letter on the pencil. You're gonna rotate uh, which side is this? Rotate to your left, keep your eyes on the pencil, and then back to the center. Rotate up and to the left, lifting that arm up and above you. And I'm keeping my eyes locked on the pencil for folks that are blind or visually impaired, keep your nose locked on the pencil. And then you're gonna rotate down and to the left, and then back to the center. Switch your hands. Okay, so pencil in the right hand. Rotate at shoulder height to the right and back to the center. Rotate up and to the right and back to the center. Rotate down and to the right and back to the center and switch hands. Okay, I want you to move at your own pace here. Rotate at shoulder height and center, rotate up, uh, up and to the left and center, and then down and to the left and center and switch hands and so on. The faster you go for this, the harder it becomes. This is actually more for your vestibular system. So if you need to go slower, you need to start slower, then definitely do that. And if you get dizzy or nauseous, take a break. Keep doing it, what you're doing. I'm just gonna give you one more layer. Your tongue now is gonna move in whatever direction you're going. 
So if you're rotating to your left at shoulder height, the tongue just pokes into the left cheek and then center. When you rotate up into the left, the tongue goes to the upper left hand corner of your cheek and then center. When you rotate down and left, the tongue goes to the lower left hand corner of your cheek and then back to the center. Okay, and just repeating that, poking that tongue into the several quadrants, whatever quadrant it is that you're working in, up, sideways, or down on both sides. Yeah, nice everyone, that looks good. Making sure you're not holding your breath. Throwing a little coordination at you with the tongue and the arm movements. Maybe just do a couple more. Mm -hmm. And then coming back to the center. Okay, good. Set the pencils down just for a moment. Let's just find a reset here. Good, so coming into our swinging rotations, opposite knuckles tap the low back or the sides of your body. And if you're standing, letting your hips swing with you, letting your feet swing with you. Okay, good, coming back to the center. You can have you take your hands and hold, hold your other hand or just smush your hands and your knuckles together. And then you're gonna lift your hands as high above your head as you can. Okay, so we're gonna imagine like we're drawing a ginormous circle around us. So we're gonna lean back if you can, if you're trying to push your arms back behind you, you're gonna reach your hands all the way out to the left as far as you can, keep those hands together. You're gonna to go down towards the floor, sweep, and touch the floor if you can. Coming up on the other side, reaching away, and then lifting up and back towards the sky. Yeah, it's just a little harder with our hands together. Circling down, touching, reaching the ground out in front of us, reaching up and out through the other side, and then reaching up towards the sky and back behind us down, circling through, coming up on the other side. Yeah, pause at the top and then switch directions. And then see if you can bring your breath into this. Inhale to come up on the side, exhale in the center. Inhale to go down, Exhale to circle through the floor. Inhale up. Exhale center. You're breathing into the open ribs. Inhale to go down. And exhale through the center. Inhale into the open ribs. Exhale center. This is your last one. Inhale down. Exhale through the center. And lastly, inhaling all the way back up and then arms come down and just finding a few shoulder circles here. Okay, good. Let's just do uh, one more visual thing here. So grab your pencils again. Okay, this one will be kind of different for folks here. So holding, lay back up, holding your pencils. We're gonna go, uh, actually we'll go in all of the directions. So let's start holding your pencils out to the left and the right. Keep your nose and your head pointed straight forward and jumping your eyes from left to right. Pick two different letters on your pencils, two different letters. Jump your eyes from letter to letter as quick as you can 
challenge your eye range of motion. How wide can you get those pencils uh, without your head having to move? Just the eyes are jumping back and forth. You're gonna do about 20 jumps side to side. Sit back here. 20 jumps up and down. Challenge your eye range of motion there. 20 jumps on one diagonal. 20 eye jumps on the other diagonal. For folks that are blind or visually impaired, we're going to bring this more into a VOR. So you can hold you can hold a pencil out if that's helpful for you. Otherwise, you're going to be doing the exact same uh thing in all of those directions but the head is going to be moving so 20 head nods 20 head shakes 20 head moving in one diagonal 20 head moving in the other diagonal if you want to make that harder and come to more of a um, for standing athletes that are blind or visually impaired if you want to come up to standing and balancing on one leg as you do that or you're walking the tightrope like this, as you're doing those head movements, you can do that too. Yeah, yeah, nice everybody, that looks really good. Yeah, doing the, these are, these are called eye saccades, it's just a fancy word for eye jumps. Doing these eye saccades, especially the one side to side where you're jumping the eyes left to right, um, is a really good calming nervous system. It's a, it's a really good one to calm your nervous system. Um, it, it has to do with um, how we move through the world and our eyes adjusting left, right, left, right. They've brought that into certain forms of therapy. So that's a really good one to help reset your nervous system if you're ever feeling stressed. Okay, good. When you're done with those, go ahead and set the pencils down just so I know you're done. Keep going if you're still going, we're just gonna come do a little bit of rotation. So we'll go both arms crossed over the chest. You're gonna look over your left shoulder and then look over your right shoulder. And just going back and forth, and I just want you to notice, I want you to look around and notice the space behind you. Are there doors? Are there windows? Can you find any dust or spiders on the floor? <laughs> or, maybe or maybe spider webs in the corners? Okay, so look for something new that you haven't noticed before, even though you live in the space you're in, just look for something new. Make it interesting for you and your eyes. Just do that a couple more times, rotating over one shoulder and then the other. Okay, and we'll come back to the center. Find a few big arm circles going backwards. Good. Do one more, leave the arms up and then take a dive forward. Find an inhale at the bottom and then an exhale to roll up. Good, and we'll bring the arms down. Okay, we'll close the eyes, we'll find a still point. And we'll just find that box breathing one more time here. So hands can come to the low belly. <clears throat> when you're ready, you can stay on my count. You can move faster or slower. Okay, but we'll take an inhale, three, two, one, hold, two, one, exhale, one, and hold. Inhale, hold, exhale, 
and hold. One more. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. And hold. Go ahead and come back to normal breathing. Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. We'll take one more inhale. One more exhale. And we'll open the eyes. All right, thank you so much for joining everyone. Happy Thursday. Enjoy the warm weather if you're getting out there today. I'm um, we'll stick around if folks have questions. Otherwise, it was great to see you all. And we'll see you Thank you time. so much. Yeah, of course. See you next time.